How's everyone doing out there? This is The Awakening. This is Super Solican. I want to get into this message. I want to talk about respecting the land. Respecting the land. Do you think do you think that that's something that God doesn't think about? Do you think that that's not something he takes into consideration or is concerned about? Respecting the land. What do I mean by that? Respecting the earth. Respect like you right now due to greed, human greed and human capitalism and human again, human greed. Do you have the land has been has been ravaged oil, you know, fracking oil, sir. Like people have been trying to that's they literally want to rob the lifeblood of the earth. And they act like that's the only thing that um, cars, that gasoline, they they act like that the on the fossil fuels is the only way that we can make gasoline. When they know they have much, there's much more technology that and cleaner technology that they can use to propel propel these cars. But this greed, Satan has Satan is the one and his demonic beings are the ones who taught humans how to do these things. And it's witchcraft to God. You have to understand this. Look, what was Jesus Christ name traveling on? You see how, how far, how Jesus Christ, the time that he chose to come into the earth, the time that God chose to send Jesus into the earth, there were no cars. There were no cars. There were no airplanes. Jesus Christ was traveling on foot, by animal, you know, on boats, ships. These are things that are natural. These are the natural things of the earth. You look how many, and I'm not saying that people, you know, that traveling in is is a bad thing per se, like car travel or airplane travel is a bad thing per se. I don't recommend getting on airplanes all the time. Like you, you can, when those things are going down, you're instantly dead. There is nothing you could do but pray if something goes wrong up there. You're dead. But the the big wigs, the look at everything that people these that people do on the earth. They they're raping the earth. They're raping and pillaging from the earth. But what you got to understand is that this place don't belong to you. This is not your land. This is God's land. See, and God gave us parameters. He in the beginning, God gave his people parameters of how to live, the society that they should be building. He gave them rules and parameters in their society. And he gave them rules on how to take care of the land that he gave them. People, you're forgetting that God gave you this earth. God gave you this land. The only reason you're here breathing, sustaining a oxygen, um, H2O is here for your for your sustainability. All the elements is here for that your body is made up of so you can get the nutrients and, and, and get the things from the earth. The earth yields its own food. The earth yields food. You don't have to do nothing. Now, do you see birds starving? You don't, it really, if you was out and about, look at John the Baptist. John the Baptist was living in the wilderness. He was not starving. If you was to go out there, you wouldn't have to starve if you knew how to take care of yourself. If you just, and you should start, really start doing that now, like studying these things and like botany and um and how to hunt, you know, so you won't be caught off guard. Like you depend, you're dependent on this, um, this system, this demonic system, this satanic system that's not going to sustain itself because it's killing the earth. It's robbing from the earth. And these, th the way God has taught us, he gave us in the Bible, he gave us parameters for how he wants us to live. His children, the children of Israel and the Gentiles who've been grafted into the family of Israel through Christ Jesus. First of all, let me read you something here. 
This is in the book of Leviticus. It says if one of your this is in the book of Leviticus, chapter 25, verse 35. It says if one of your countrymen becomes poor and is unable to support himself among you, help him as you would an alien or a temporary resident so he can continue to live among you. Do not take interest of any kind from him, but fear your God so that your countrymen may continue to live among you. That's that's a param small parameter of just how to live like in your community. This is beginning. I'm going to give you all of this, these rules and parameters that in that are totally contrary to the way we live today, you know, and this is for harmony, for peace and harmony, not only amongst your um community, but then peace and to cause peace and harmony on the earth. OK. It says if one of your countrymen becomes poor and sells himself to you, do not make him work as a slave. He is to be treated as a hired worker or a temporary resident among you. He is to work for you into the year of Jubilee. Then he and his children are to be released to go back to his own clan and to the property of his forefathers. See, that's when this is why I've explained this in another video. You you don't even understand the concept of slavery then and the concept of modern day antebellum slavery, which happened to black people and chattel slavery and all of the the um that happened to blacks across the world and blacks in America, especially. That's totally different. Right now, you're enslaved to your job. You have to do it. You, and you have a boss. This is the servitude. This is a hired worker. That's what you, you are right now. And that's what the Bible is telling you that the Israelites should do for their countrymen. You don't treat them as a slave. You treat them as a hired worker. And they're, be, they're able to go free. They're after the year of Jubilee, they're able to go free and then go back to their own land and with their children. They've gained something. So now they get their own land. They don't have to. Now they can be able to get service and things like that if they prosper. But that's all up to God. But again, there's harmony within that. You don't treat your if your countryman is becoming poor and not able to support himself. You help him help him. You know, help him so he could stay in your land. We want to take interest. Everything you do, let you not pay your taxes or fall behind or something on your, your mortgage or, or your taxes. They're going to try to take your house. You still got to pay taxes on land. My grandfather paid his home off. My grandfather's no longer with us, but we still have to pay taxes on the land. It's ridiculous. That is not that's this ain't that your land. This is God's land. And that brings me to the year of Jubilee. This is in the book of Leviticus, chapter 25. And let's go to chapter verse 23, chapter 25, verse 23. Well, first of all, well, let's start at chapter. Let me read chapter eight to tell you what the year of Jubilee is. Count off seven Sabbaths. Count off seven Sabbath of years, seven times seven years, so that the seven Sabbaths of years amount to a period of 49 years. Then have the trumpet sounded everywhere on the 10th day of the seventh month on the day of atonement. Sound the trumpet throughout the land. Consecrate the 15th, the 15th year and proclaim liberty throughout the land. To all its inhabitants, it shall be a jubilee for you. Each one of you is to return to his family property and each to his own clan. The 15th year shall be a jubilee for you. Do not sow and do not reap what grows of itself or harvest the untended vines for it is a jubilee. And it is to be holy for you. Eat only what is taken directly from the fields. And then I'll go down to verse 23 now. 
This is chapter 25 again in Leviticus and verse 23. This is the most important part. The land must not be sold permanently because the land is mine. You are but aliens and my tenants. Do you understand in that what the land, meaning that the land must not be sold? It's meaning that the land must not be, it must not be harvested and, and, and drilled into and, and worked all the time. People farmers work in the yard, work in the ground all the time, you know, not giving the earth time to rest. The earth needs time to rest. The earth is a living thing. Do you understand? It's living. And it's and do you under, and do you know who it belongs to? It's not yours. And I'm just proving it to you. It says in Leviticus chapter 25 verse 23. This is why this, this is why people don't like the Bible. This is why secular people and the wicked men who run and men and women who run this world, this earth, don't want you to believe what the word, what the Bible says. It constantly puts out propaganda to try to discredit it, but it doesn't work because God has given is the one who's has given you the proper instruction. He's the only king. He's the owner. If they were to acknowledge this, then they couldn't do you the way that they do you and tax you for everything, take everything from you. But see, the Bible warns you of what those leaders would do when you put them in power. But you wanted to put you wanted those leaders. You didn't want God to rule over you. See, God was the ruler, but you didn't want him to do that. You wanted kings and, and, and presidents like everybody else. And look what it's got us in the But I'm telling you, though, regardless of that. We know the truth and the truth is the land must not be sold permanently because the land is mine. You are but aliens and my tenants throughout the country that you hold as a possession. You must provide for the redemption of the land. The land you have to you have to take care of the earth. That's our responsibility, first of all, because not just because we live here, that should be, you know, a high priority for you, but because it belongs to God. We have a responsibility, again, to take care of the earth we live on. So that's that means not being not constantly working it, fracking it, drilling it for all for its blood, taking um just cutting down all the trees just to try to be to try to speed up business because you want to do some get some some lumber out of or, or some paper whatever whatever product you're trying to do you you do it constantly the earth has to rest you want to people get to the point where they we got to preserve certain wildlife and habitats and we have to put certain laws in place to keep people from hunting and exterminating certain wildlife. We got to put certain laws in place to keep people out of certain areas and from from working, from trying to work those certain areas and put condominiums on them. Like if it was up to man, this wicked man, like you wouldn't all the stuff you see, well, it would be a concrete jungle and all of the things, the good things that you see from the Lord. You got to understand. That's why you. All the sins of mankind cause these things to have natural disaster and things like that. That's not just that's the sins of man doing that. You understand? You have to reap what you sow. People right now, look at the fools that they make. Everything's processed and fake. The real food, like if you want some real strawberries or real just anything without more than three ingredients, they want to charge you the utmost amount of money. Because they know that that is the stuff that, you know, that that's the, the purest thing that you could get for free. But that is the thing that's really sustainable. That's the thing that will sustain you and give you life. Not the process stuff that they have, but they trying to they doing so much and working the land. So the land not giving them everything they need. They don't have enough. You know, because they kill in the land, but they have all these machines. They have all of the technology, but you still got millions of, if not billions of starving people in the world. People who can't get enough food from the land, the land not tilling, not giving, reaping them a harvest. 
You've been punished. You've been punished because you're killing, you're killing Mother Earth. You are not, you have no mindset about let me, let me stop doing this or let me not do this. Let me not live. Even just on the smallest thing of littering out your, you know, you're being disrespectful to God, man. You're just think about these things. See, that's why they don't want you to take deep dives into the Bible and know what the Bible says. They don't want you to believe what the Bible says because things will turn a, will have to turn a 180. A lot of the systems of the world will be looked at for what they are as wicked. You understand? Like this, you was born here. This isn't yours. You didn't create none of this stuff. Animals live here. Other people live here. Look at the pollution levels, man. People, my mama got allergies, man. You know, and I pray, I pray that the Lord takes those things. I be trying to tell her different methods and things to use because really, you know, though allergies and things, you can, you can um, get rid of those too, really. You know, it just depends on what you're putting into your body or, or whatever. But, but the smog and stuff out here, the pollution, that doesn't help. That doesn't help people to breathe. You need to breathe this air. For one time, they talk, they was, you know, they talk about global warming and the atmosphere, the atmosphere having holes in it or the atmosphere shrinking or thinning. This could, this is possible. Like this is due to all of the things that you do. I used big cars running around, bigger, they get bigger and bigger car, you know, they, well, they did before they start trying to make Teslas and electric cars. They was constantly, you know, these diesels running around. It's constantly a, a bunch of cars on the road. Constantly. It's constantly people tending, t fracking the ground, trying to get more oil. They over here. Are they over there. Are they over here. Why do you think you got all these earthquakes? You constantly got people um, messing with the marine life, messing with the, the water, you know, trying to put chemicals in the water. Oh, man, this is the wicked world that we have when we deviate from the perfect plan of the Lord. But I'm here to tell you, you have a responsibility to take care of this earth. Recycle your stuff. That blue can that you have out there in your alley, it's not just there for, for show. You need to separate your plastics, your papers, recycle that stuff. That's showing respect to God, man. It is because, again, I'm going to read you this before we end. Book of Leviticus, chapter 25, verse 23. The land must not be so permanently because the land is mine and you are but aliens and my tenants god's calling you a tenant man because he created this and this is his and you're here you don't build it you didn't make it you just want to destroy it and take from it gold. People out here taking gold mining and trying to get all the gold they can. Gold and, you know, people dying over it, dying over these diamonds in Africa, you know, blood diamonds, all of this stuff. But this ain't yours. Like, who, who are you? Like, you, you know what I'm saying? This, this is the earth. God got diamonds. So what? You know, these are things that he make. He makes some more of them, too. See, but. This is how far again, how far we've just fallen in America. In America, you turn over the, the dollar, says in God, we trust on it. Which God, man? Which one? Because it ain't the God of the Bible. But you have a responsibility to take care of this earth and leave it better. Try to leave it, you know, in a good space for the next generation and the other generations and the other generations. That's a responsibility of yours because it's not your home. You don't own it. You are nothing but a tenant to God. So with that being said, this is The Awakening. I'm Super Solican. Hit the like and subscribe button. Support the message. Spread the word. I'm gone.